thanks for watching. Back in the garage here doing some cool stuff as usual. Uh, I'm really excited to make this video because this is something that I've always wanted to do on this machine. I've had this X-Tool D110 watt here for uh, over a year now and I've played with this concept a little bit but uh, I, I haven't really got to act on it so uh, in today's video I'm going to be showing you how I use the new Imager Grayscale algorithms to make these really cool two and a half dimension like signet coins. Uh, the original image was made for a fiber laser to make a challenge coin, to make an actual brass challenge coin as a depth map. And I'm actually using that depth map and I'm running it through grayscale uh, and using the tones and curves from the grayscale to achieve the depth, you know, different than a vector engrave. I know we've seen some coins in the past that were vector engraved and, uh, you know, that's, that's power on or off. You know, so the depth of the engraving is the same across the entire coin, whereas on something like this, you can see the depth actually varies, giving it texture, uh, which is something that, uh, you know, it, it's hard to achieve, and uh, it's really rewarding when you do. I'm not saying this is the greatest, but I am finally making headway on it, so I'm really happy to make this video. Uh, so... Again, I'm going to show you those new Imager Grayscale algorithms uh, and how I prep it and then how I run it and, uh, you know, and how I clean it up and, and prep the wood afterwards. Uh, you can see I've actually, I've got an entire stack of these. Uh, this is the one that I run in the video. Uh, pretty nice. One thing that I want to note is that uh, I've been doing these out of 3mm and 6mm basswood. Now... I noticed that on some of them in the three millimeter basswood on my really deep ones the really deep engravings uh, it's starting to get a little bit of a bend to it pretty common for uh, thin basswood especially when you're engraving about half of the thickness away from the wood uh, in a relief style so I have since switched to six millimeter now much more rigid uh, Engrave similarly, detail similar. So, if you find this helpful, uh, like, follow, subscribe. Make sure you hit the button. Alan the Maker. Uh, find me on Facebook. Uh, I've got an X Tool group, X Tool Laser Engraving Tips and Tricks, free imager files. That's where I'm posting all my imager content for free. I've got all kinds of resource files, material settings, hold down pens, things that people sell that should be free already so uh feel free to come check it out and uh let's get to it we are at the uh imager.com web application uh tried and true if you follow my work you know i've been using imager offline for a while now so i'm pretty spoiled so coming back to this is really bringing me back here um but the algorithms that i've been using to make these coins it is in testing still and it it's only on the, the website so uh, to show you what I'm talking about under materials See we got a fourth one here now called grayscale You know and what this does is it uses the algorithms and it sets the tones the the tones and the curves uh, Based on what the algorithms would do when they dither the image typically um, You know so depending on the image, you know, you're gonna want to pick these based on the image uh, I've already burned this image so I know which one I'm going to use but prior to that I've actually ran the image through four or five of these algorithms and had them side by side and made a determination of which one I think would uh, you know give me the most depth by by utilizing the tones and curves um, what I landed on for this one was Marcin now after doing a bunch of these I found I've used a couple different algorithms so it's not just Marcin every time so it's truly based on the depth map that you're using um, so getting right into it here I'm a drag and dropper so my image is this awesome little dragon holding a rose it's got a little rosebud up here I want to say this one was from our buddy Tomas uh, thank you for the image. So drag and drop. There she is. Now I'm going to crop. 
Uh, and this one is a square image. This is kind of a good example because I want to make it a coin. And to do that, when I scroll down here, I've got this slider that says round edges. I'm going to grab it and drag it all the way to the right. And that's going to make it into a circle. And then uh, with my mouse in the center, I zoom in. That way I can fill some of the space of the coin. I'm going to try and keep it as eccentric as possible. Looks boop. Looking good. Uh, we'll scale next, so I'm not worried about the size. Resize. Inches. Um, I think I did this one in two and a half inches. For me, I use 423 DPI on my 10 watt X tool D1 that I'm using a custom focus gauge that I ran a ramp test and determined that was the best for what I'm doing here. And there she is. All right, so now I'm ready to select my material algorithm, grayscale, again, Marcin. Uh, you'll see that you know it keeps it grayscale, but it really it really accentuated uh, the curves. This is going to help some of these like the the spines on his wings are going to stand out more than they would in this depth map here because you know the original depth map it was generated for a fiber laser to utilize 3D slice and light burn. Uh, you know, and us using grayscale, we're going to be more of a one and done approach. You know, we're going to run it once, and it's going to it's going to range the intensity of the laser based on the intensity of the uh, the color here, you know, and white being the least intense and black being it's going to burn us at 100% power or whatever the max power you put in for your grayscale algorithm and light burn uh, or whatever software you use. Um, but for this, I'm actually ready to download PNG. All right, now going into light burn. I'm going to import the image we just made. There she is. Uh, I'm going to put it in the layer that I've been running it in. And I'm going to show you my settings that I've used. Give you an idea. Uh, my speed, I run 50 millimeters a second. It seems kind of slow, but the firmware on the X tool controller, if you're over 318 DPI, tends to get weird depending on the image. And, uh, you know what we're doing here is about as weird as it gets for the form firmware on on the X tool controller. So uh, I found 50 to be the best for me for what I'm doing here. Uh, my power range is zero to 95 percent. Bidirectional, you know, overscan 10 percent, basically saying it's rolling over 10 percent extra off the edges. You know, this gives the servo motors time to engage. In both directions past the piece and then in reverse coming back to do the bi-directional scan uh, probably one of the most important variables is our line interval whatever we set it in imager we want to make sure we match that here and uh, of course none of this means anything unless we have grayscale selected um, and that's that and then to cut it out afterwards I just draw a circle you know, I have it next to it, and uh, I'll, I'll run this image and, and engrave the coin, and then I'll run a second program and cut it. Um, but basically, I draw a circle, whatever the size of this this coin was, based on you know this number here. So I'll select it, uh, Control C to copy. Now I'm going to draw a circle. Click and hold. If I hold shift, it'll actually keep it an eccentric circle. I'm going to put it in a cut layer. And then uh, with the lock locked, I'm going to adjust either the width or the height. And now I'm going to paste that number back in there from whatever the size of the, the coin was. Um, because it's locked, it will enhance them both at the same time. There they are. And uh, that's how I run. Zap, zap, zap. There she goes. I tried to do one over there, but this plywood had 
the blue pocket in the green. So stopped it, moved it over. Whatever. Little coins everywhere. We'll see what it's done. Alright, so this is the aftercare. So here's the piece after it's been completed here. See it's got a bunch of resin and all kinds of gunk on it. Though it is pretty clear, even where that knot is, still got a lot of depth to it, which is good. Uh, but anyways, uh, how I prep this next, and this is the final step, is I use some type of dish soap, water source, it's just easier for me to do it out here in the garage, and I'm on a bowl there. And I got a toothbrush, and uh, basically, spray this guy. And be kind of gentle, you know. If you have a lot of fine details, uh, the toothbrush it can uh, can break them off. Right. In the water. Bam! There she is. Pretty good. Got a lot of depth to it. Uh, it's an awesome image. I want to say this one was shared by Tomas, so thank you. And, uh, just pat it dry here. And, uh, set it aside until it dries, and I'll take some pictures and I'll put them on here.